Hi everyone, Adrian from Body of Excellence Canada, Philip and Lewis. Uh, we just did the book card video, which will drop first, so please watch that and comment. Um, this video, we were originally going to do uh, a Lumen P1 um, uh, video. Unfortunately, because it's got so much to it, I thought let's do it um, uh, next week. Uh, it'll give us a bit more time, give me a bit more time to get into it. So I thought, why don't we do uh, a topic that I know a lot of people always email us about what do you think of this uh, you know I have this system should I buy this and so on so rather than go into specifics per se I thought maybe let's address the bigger picture how do you choose a system and when I say st system meaning whether you're doing an upgrade to one piece or another or whatever it is technical things are pretty easy if you're looking for a streamer and you want to listen primarily to title then obviously you got to choose a streamer that can do title, right? That's pretty obvious. If your connectivity is uh, limited to optical, then you need to make sure that your streamer has optical outputs. Those are obvious things. But I'm talking more from a 30,000 foot level. How do you choose a system? And it's, so, some, some people make it very, very complicated and other people make it too simple. So I thought, let's let's just do an overview. And the guys don't know that we were going to do this um, topic. So I'm just going to start. Yeah, I'm protesting right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start essentially with what I'm trying to say and then have the guys sort of fill in the blanks. So this is what I mean. This morning when I was listening to Bukhart, this topic occurred to me uh, thinking, in today's world, if I were starting all over again um, and I wanted help, how would I know to ask the right questions to a dealer or somebody along those lines to help me? Uh, so this is how I would start. First, know your objective. So many, many years ago, I went to a business training course, paid a ton of money in California, but it was one of the very, very best courses I ever uh, took. And the thing to be clear about is always know what your objective is. Why are you buying a system? Uh, that should be a simple obvious answer right uh, to enjoy music well is it this is what i mean back in the 80s when i got bitten by the audiophile bug like in from a sonic perspective rather than the technical specifications perspective um the bug bit hard i finally heard a pair of little ls 35a's with a musical fidelity a1 integrated class a amplifier um, with a rega 3 turntable and it made music it made me want to cry when i listened to this piece of music uh, to the music that uh, ring audio was playing for me it it was absolutely magical compared to the bose 901s that i had bought at home it sounded so much more so much more beautiful so much more magical so much more emotional and of course at the time i started realizing there were magazines like this absolute sound and stereophile uh, underground magazines that you couldn't easily find and so when i read those magazines they said oh you got to buy you know if you could afford it the infinity rs one b's right and and alex will throw up the uh, picture of it these are four chassis four enclosure speakers rs one b's were what the senior reviewers in absolute sound were using uh, and then Harry Pearson himself used the Big Daddy, the, 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 the Infinity IRSs. Um, so I said to myself, one day I'm going to buy these speakers, but first let me go listen to them. And I went everywhere, every store, nobody had a pair. And then out of nowhere, I found a store called High End Audio down in the beach area, went there, and he says, no, I don't have the uh, RS1 Bs, but I have better. And I thought, wow gotta hear these so went down there and he was very nice to play me a pair of speakers which today i own it's called the martin logan cls's played a vpi turntable with the eminent technology tone arm and again alex will throw up these pictures um, uh, going through i think it was a counterpoint preamplifier at the time i can't remember a pair of quicksilver monoblocks and these martin logan speakers and i didn't know they were speakers i walked in and i see these transparent room divider screens they're curved right and then he plays weavers at carnegie hall you know uh, <laughs> ramblin boy and i sat there and my jaw dropped and i was transfixed there it is they're singing in front of me and when the song stopped Guant uh, guantanamero went and again that magic didn't end uh that that sense of being there when they played when they sang back in 63 64 it was absolutely unbelievably amazing i couldn't afford it i, mean, I had no literally no money i spent all my money from osap uh, there's no more money left but i knew that one day I, I would get a pair 
And therein uh, uh, lies my first suggestion. Know what your objective is. Know what it is that you like in terms of music and what you are expecting the music to do for you. Because simultaneously, while I love the Martin Logans, they also had a lot of flaws. And I didn't know that until much later when I played the music that I normally play. Not the Weavers of Carnegie Hall, which while that's an incredible recording and I love the music, folk music is wonderful, when I started playing music that I grew up with, uh, uh, formative years, right? My, my siblings uh, used to play uh, uh, Dan Fogelberg, uh, the Eagles, um, uh, Peter, Paul, and Mary, and uh, Bee Gees, and Beatles, and so on. When I started playing commercial albums like that, suddenly I realized through the uh, Martin Logans, while that transparency and clarity was still there, some of the recordings were so badly recorded, I couldn't enjoy that music anymore. So be aware of that. Do you want a system that's so transparent and so good and so clear that the vast majority of the music that you might own, that you love tremendously, will not be playable anymore? And that's something to be aware of. So let me stop here and, and, and have the guys come in and chime in and see if they've themselves experienced this kind of situation and what they think. So, you know, my journey started with listening to LS35As. Yeah. Get Ring Audio. Oh, I didn't know that. And it transformed my life because oh. Michael Rule said to me, Philip, yeah, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Come here. And he sat me down. He put a pair of LS35As in the proper position, turned the lights down, and he played something for me. And it was like they were in the middle of the room. I couldn't believe it. And then there was everything there. And, and to put in perspective, for those of you who don't know what an LS35A is, it's a speaker literally about this tall. Right, it, uh, this deep, right? So maybe what six inches or so deep, yeah. right? And, and maybe about eight inches or so wide, and the drivers are tiny, uh, um, and yet they can do some crazy magic. They can do, yeah. It was definitely magical. And then fast forward a little bit, um, I went to high end audio. I saw Arthur, and he played the Weavers for me <laughs> on a pair of electrostatics. And it was also transformative because I hadn't heard anything like that. He didn't even use that good of a turntable. He used some inexpensive Ariston turntable. And so I understand the idea of like you, you kind of want to know what it is that you that interests you. But at the same time, you kind of don't know until you hear it. And we have people come into the store all the time and I play stuff for them and they're going like, wow, what, what, what was that I just heard? Because every, it's not like they've already heard all this and, 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 and um, because if they have, then they already have something like it or, you know, they understand it. When they come in here, they have, they don't understand. We show them how it can be much more and better in your life. Um, but and always the first question I ask is, you know, what's your room? The room is so important. As we know from the previous video on the boot cart, people are always commenting, well, you have glass walls and so forth. And our answer is, well, a lot of places are like that. So it has to sound good in that kind of context. Uh, I recently bought a pair of Rogers LS5s. These are not the LS35As, these are the fives. And at the time back, back then, those were the things I could afford. I couldn't afford the three five A's. They were a little bit more. So I always wanted a pair of LS fives and I never bought a pair and I finally got a pair. And now it's in my loft and the, the space is glorious and the speakers have bass and all this stuff. And they're like way out in the room. And I didn't even like really try to set them up correctly or however that is. It just plays music. So, I was ready for it and the speaker is a good enough performer and when it's in a big enough space or the right kind of space, it's again transformative. It, it, it punches well above its weight. So part of it that you're, you're going through is yeah, definitely, you know, you have to, you have to be open and receptive. I think that's, that's another important thing. Not only do you have to know what you want, but you have to have an idea that it could be something else like CLSs, they do something special, but if you're not open to the idea, you'll never listen to them. So be open and receptive and listen to things and just choose the one that sounds best to you. And if you react physiologically to the music that's being played, that's always a good sign. Lewis, what do you think? Well, um, 
I was not really into high end as such um, after leaving Jamaica where I worked with um, Derek um, company and um, they sold high end so I didn't hear you know uh, coming to Canada I just didn't have the disposable income to start listening to high end and I didn't really go to high end stores and then I gradually started to go to to different stores a little higher and higher end, but never something like what I see here so my expectation of of you know electronics and you know the speakers are was totally different than coming here to a true high-end store on the other side of it I am more into the music than I'm into the electronics and how it sound sounds so my journey has not been the same as you guys um, I don't have the years of experience with the different um, equipment and sounds whatever but my favorite speakers are right here in this room which is the Sabrina X Wilson's they are amazing as we were speaking about on the book card um, video the dynamics this thing has dynamics low down so that's what I l really enjoy now I I don't want to have to turn it up to get a lot of bass or you know so I you're saying you're specifically um, you have this kind of idea about what that sound is that 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 would make you happy you're right and that's what you're looking for right yes I have a specific um, wish and to hear a, something you know rounded to me which I call rounded but some people may call it too bright some people may call it you know whatever whatever but um, yeah that's I, I, I like detail but I don't like overly detail so but um, my journey has been different from Adrian and yourself so well, interestingly mm -hmm. enough, I, I would say there are actually more similarities, especially for me towards the latter part of my journey. Uh, in the beginning, I chased the detail. I mm -hmm. chased that clarity. I chased the imaging and soundstage because back then in the 80s, those were all new phenomena. Speakers earlier than that, you know, you look at the JBL Paragons and so on. What what imaging are you talking about? It's just one big, you know, well, console. It's a big smear. It's a big right? smear. It's one big, big console round, basically rounded. producing very loud sounds uh, that came from that wall. It's basically that was it. And then suddenly you had little Spica TC50s. You know, you had little LS35As that could do imaging. Um, you had speakers like that. And suddenly that phenomenon became apparent. And so a lot of audiophiles like myself started to chase that. But in many ways at the expense of musical enjoyment playing music that you care about and so for me again my, my, my first uh, suggestion is be really clear about what you are buying it for if you want to go through that journey that I did in the beginning as Philip did in the beginning perhaps um, you want to hear all the detail in the soundstage and so on and so forth as long as you realize that a sharp knife cuts and if a recording is not that great you're going to hear it and if it if that means you're not going to enjoy your music anymore but you're okay with that it's cool it becomes a hobby um, and then as I, then the second part of the um, uh, suggestion in terms of setting up a system is what about a mix of being able to do both audiophile recordings versus uh, commercially available recordings and I that that's for me where I am today it's it's vitally important that I am able to enjoy the music that I enjoy that I love, and still yes be able to uh, enjoy audiophile recordings, um, because that's still important. A, a really great recording will show you why you're spending all this money. Otherwise, you know, just buy a little transistor radio, um, and and that that would be good for a lot of people. That's all they need. You know, a little Bose tabletop radio for a lot of people. That's all they need. Mm -hmm. But if you want more then you need to look at that and then say well but I also don't want to give up on the qualities of, of, of the music that I care about so that's the other thought as well um, so the, the the store audio excellence um, the kind of equipment that we offer <coughs> 
tends to be able to do both quite well. It is not by any means the most uh, uh, high-resolution detailed systems that your money can buy. There are speakers that do uh, that. There are electronics that do that. If you want something that can show you a gnat, you know, a fly buzzing around 50 feet away in the background, um, so clearly, you know, I don't think our systems are that clear. But then I don't want to hear that necessarily either. Um, uh, if it's there, that's fine. I, I want to hear the musical intent. For me, that's even more important today. Uh, um, let me give you an example of what I mean. So this morning when we were listening to, when I was listening to the book card, and I decided to switch over to different speakers that we own. I actually tried two different speakers in the same kind of price range. And I started realizing that I wasn't switching back again. I was just using the speakers that we sell. Uh, about 40 minutes into it, that's when I realized I hadn't switched back to the book card. Uh, th again, this is not to select the book card. This is just to give you an idea of what I mean about musical enjoyment and involvement. I would go from one song to another to another and then kept listening. I mean, literally kept going on and on and on. Um, I, I, and then I found myself back in the 60s and 70s and 80s music. Because again, those were formative years for me. Uh, um, I, I would listen to, uh, I mentioned Bee Gees, and and partly because last night um, I was watching one of uh, one of the last Bee Gees concerts, and I thought, oh, how sad that they broke up because of egos within the siblings, right? Because they wrote some wonderful music, um, and then I so I would play that, and I of course immediately went over to the Beatles, and then I start thinking. You know what? I hadn't heard uh, the Brothers Johnson. I don't know how many of you will know this, but yeah, yeah. Stomp. I started playing Stomp, yeah. and what a joy that was. And then I thought, oh, man, got to hear the Commodores oh. now. So I went to the <laughs> Commodores, right? Wow. Yeah, and then Lionel Richie. And what's fascinating is that it didn't matter what I played. I was consistently involved. And you could easily tell that some recordings are better than others. Yeah. But despite that, the music came through. Um, uh, and, and I mean, my playlist was crazy. I would go from song to song to song and thank God for streamers because you can do that yeah. so easily. I just was, be, you know, uh, able to do, go from one song to another and I got emotionally very involved. That is a system that I would buy very easily today. And then when I look at what we hooked up, um, uh, there's a Hegel H120, was it? Mm -hmm. Uh, with with the speakers that I was listening to, floor standing little tiny floor standing speakers, they're what two thousand twenty five hundred bucks, um, and then you know uh, cabling and a streamer, uh, maybe for uh, what five six thousand dollars, I'm done, and that is a system I can very comfortably recommend to anybody. Take it home, you'll be able to do all the audio file stuff and also enjoy it musically, um, and then on the other end of the spectrum. Um, um, Philip's client the other day came by, bought a pair of Aidas and so on, and um, uh, he, I overheard some of the music he was playing, and it wasn't Philip's normal audiophile fare, you know, Annette. Uh, he was playing good old rock and roll music, and when he was done, he says, okay, I'll take them, right? Um, well, you know what he wants now. What? 1.25 KWs. Yeah, there you go. But the point is that it, it, it did more than enough of the audiophile stuff, but it wasn't so much that, that kind of stuff that was moving him. It was the fact that it played music and he enjoyed that music. Um, so, so for me, that's the important thing. You got to enjoy your music, whatever your music is. So bring your music when you go audition uh, uh, your system that you're thinking about. Guys, any thoughts? I agree with that um, assessment. Um, bring your music, um, but not, not three hours like what we've been through <laughs> the last time oh. but i'm more into the music than i'm into the reproduction right, so i have a question the, for you lewis yeah. uh because i played this track the other day and you were like oh and because you asked me the day after what was, what was that what was that what was that what was that and and i'm trying to think like what did i play that was so good that lewis is just beside himself and then black knight it was black knight by doug mcleod and you said that's that guy is a person of color singing right and i said no take a look at the album cover it's this fairly pale person and you couldn't believe it but what did no. you experience when you first heard that song oh it's amazing it's amazing i'm not into blues 
Um, but I'm telling you, this song is amazing. I don't know whose playlist, whether it's an well, Adrian's it was, or, or yours. Well, but we both was, know that artist. So, Oh, man, I'm telling you. And I, that's a great song. I went home that same night and I, because I made sure I put it into the phone and saved it untitled on my phone so I would have it. So, so, so. so this is the thing that happens with you when we have people come in and they, they, they start playing their, their playlist yeah. where they tell me songs and I discover, this is how I discover new music. It's yeah. like, oh, wow, that sounds so good. Yeah. I don't really tell them that, but that's what I'm thinking yeah. inside. And then I add it to my playlist. Well, I'll give you an example, just not to cut you off, but this morning, for example, <clears throat> Um, somehow it tweaked to me. I hadn't heard Aretha Franklin in the longest time. <clears throat> Back in the uh, 80s, yeah, 80s, I heard about this album, Amazing Grace. So I went down to Sam the Record Man. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who are in Toronto, you'll know who I'm talking about. I went and I looked at the album and it was a huge amount of money, like huge. The CD was maybe 100 bucks. And I don't have 100 bucks at, you know, at the age of 19 or 20. So I never did get to buy it. Never knew how good the recording was, never knew anything about it. Other than, in my mind, I'm thinking, if Aretha Franklin sings Amazing Grace, it's going to be amazing, right? Sure enough, this morning, it's untitled, so I play it. Goosebumps, my God, goosebumps. The Queen of Souls singing Amazing Grace. And of course, that immediately led me to Elvis Presley singing gospel. So I went through Elvis Presley singing gospel. There'll be peace in the valley. So... Uh, maybe two, three weeks ago, I think it was HBO, did a documentary about Elvis Presley. It was narrated by his wife and a whole bunch of other people talking about his life and, and some of the trials and tribulations he went through. And uh, after, after the whole movie fiasco where he was basically singing horrible songs and, you know, um, there was a point where he realized that his career had really become a joke. And so for uh, um, um, uh, his wife and he oftentimes, uh, his wife would say that oftentimes he would be late in the middle of the night playing at the piano by himself, just singing the same gospel song over and over and over again, meditatively, prayerfully, uh, almost asking for guidance. What should he do? What's, what, what is he all about today? And I remember watching that and thinking, wow, this is such an inter interesting insight into his life that I had never heard about. So, of course, this morning when I played it, it, had, it added much more color to the music that I was listening to with Elvis. And some of the recordings from Elvis are very variable. Some are amazing right there in the room and some sort of like in a, in a muffled tin can kind of a thing. But nevertheless, his artistry of voice, his phrasing, um, unbelievable. This is truly a voice that uh, I love tremendously. So here's something for you. Bad mastering, bad engineering cannot yeah. hide the, ver the veracity of, uh, of, of the performance. The performance always shines through, don't you think? I've yeah, heard so many bad recordings, but the performer is like right there. You can you understand what the performer is experiencing. Yeah, if it's, if it's, um, if it's a truly great performer or artist, uh, inspired during the recording, it'll come through. And that's when it's saddest, because you wish, my God, if only it was <laughs> captured better. So uh, I, we're, we're going to have to wrap up because we're almost done. So uh, again, high level conclusion for you. Don't worry so much about whether it's transparent or not, whether it's imaging or not, and so on. First, determine what your objective is. If your objective is to buy a system that is mostly for, um, for a hobby, you know, the best imaging and all this kind of stuff, then yes, then you know what your objective is, then you buy systems that will give you that. Um, and vice versa, if it's the other way around or so, sort of somewhere in the middle, which is for me, that's where I am and possibly for the guys as well. Um, and so if you come to Audio Excellence, be aware that's what we're going to play you. We're not going to play you a system that is the fastest in the world, the, 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 you know, the most transparent in the world and so on. But it will consistently play most music very, very well and give you goosebumps should the inspiration of the recording be there. Anyway, we're going to wrap up. Thanks for watching this. Uh, rambling Among Three Friends. Um, Adrian from Audio Excellence Canada, Philip, Lewis, and Alex behind the uh, controls. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.